If you're in public safety and you're not prioritizing fitness, you're a liability. Now this video is not here to call anybody out specifically. This is not here to uh, fat shame or you know, make somebody feel bad about themselves. But I do want to lend my perspective having been in police, fire, and EMS for a hot minute when it comes to fitness in this industry and how absolutely vital it is. So in this week's video, I have compiled two videos from uh, other people on Instagram, you might know Lindsay from The Pre-Hospitalist and Jason from The Mindfulness Medic. And both of them have shared their fitness journey uh, in EMS. Lindsay is a flight paramedic having worked the streets for many years before this. Jason is a firefighter paramedic and they both bring kind of a unique perspective to this topic. I will also give my own perspective and kind of what I've been doing to stay in shape to give you some ideas. This video is not like specific advice. You know, I'm not uh, sitting here telling you this is how you need to train, this is how you need to eat, this is how, what you need to prioritize in your fitness journey. What I'm here telling you is kind of reiterating the importance of fitness, showing you what three people in the industry do to stay healthy, talk about some of my experiences, why I think it's important, and then give you kind of a, a general overview, as well as some resources for you to check out. So with this, take everything we're saying and piecemeal it to fit your own life. Everybody is going to have different needs and requirements uh, moving forward. And I don't think there is one specific answer when it comes to staying fit for uh, public safety. I don't think there's like one exercise, one program, one diet that's going to work for everybody or even optimize what you're doing. Now, why is physical fitness so important in public safety? You can absolutely get away with being out of shape in EMS in particular, uh, and we see it all the time. But if you really want to be an asset to your department, if you want to be an asset to your community, you need to prioritize some kind of physical fitness. I'm not saying everybody needs to be an Olympic athlete. I'm not saying you have to bench 500 pounds, you know, run a sub two and a half hour marathon. However, just putting in the effort will make huge changes in how you can care for your patients. One example I've had recently is we uh, had a search and rescue in the mountains for somebody having a heart attack. We got inserted on the top of the mountain at above 11,000 feet and had to hike down to them about a uh, half mile to a mile with a cardiac monitor and our aid bags. Those are heavy things that aren't really meant to be hiked with all that much. So just being able to get to them in a timely manner made a difference for that patient. And this also goes down to kind of the mundane things, like you're running uh, hospice transfers on a private service. Just being able to pull the patient over to your stretcher uh, and back without taking five texts from that ER, that medical floor that have better things to be doing is important and it, it betters uh, everybody's experience. Now, this is all kind of forgetting about the uh, health benefits when it comes to like injury prevention. We are very injury prone in EMS. We put out our backs all the time. I am no exception, but I notice that while I am really diligently lifting weights and doing my runs and all of that, I'm much less likely to be injured. And there's quite a lot of data to support that as well. So using fitness as a prevention method for injury is huge. And Lindsay has some really cool things to say about uh, who you owe your fitness to at the end of her video, and I really like her take on it. Now, the second part of fitness, and I, I think this is going to rub some people the wrong way, and it's unfair, but it's the truth. It's the reality we live in. So don't take this the wrong way. Don't take this as a personal attack. But studies have shown that someone overweight is perceived as less intelligent uh, and less professional by people that witness them on the street. Like I said, that's totally not fair. However, it is the reality we're in. And as a public safety professional, you always want to be putting your best foot forward. Somebody seeing a professional in front of them will pave the way for a better history from them. It will let them open up to you more. Um, it will inspire trust from the beginning. It just benefits you to look a little bit trimmer in uniform. And that does get into hygiene as well. You know, we've seen providers walk into, you know, hospitals that, you know, have messy hair, rumpled shirts, you know, stained pants. And we've all been there, right? We've all had rough shifts and looked like crap at the end of them. 
However, this happens regularly at the beginning of people's shifts. So, you know, being well groomed, having a uniform that's pressed, regardless of your weight or fitness level, will go a long way in um, just the perception that you have to your patients. Really quick, this is not personal training advice. I'm not a personal trainer. I'm not selling you anything here. I don't have supplements. I don't have a workout plan. Uh, nobody's sponsored this video. I will recommend the Tactical Human Institute. I have worked with Benton, the owner, for a number of years, and he has college degrees and professional certifications that he can tell you all about over on his page, but he specializes in uh, fitness for first responders and really gives a lot of customized plans for people that want to just optimize their ability to perform in this space. So go follow him if you haven't already. You know, he's got a lot of remote plans that I think are great. I've used them for a while. Uh, now I've branched out into a little bit more subspecialized stuff in the endurance space, but he's a great resource and there's a lot of other stuff online. You know, if, he, if you don't jive with him or his you know, mission, there's a lot of other people uh, that have great training plans out there as well. So without further ado, let's hear from Lindsay and then Jason. Hey guys, I am Lindsay. I am the pre-hospitalist on Instagram. I just got off work. I'm about to go into the gym, but prep medic Sam asked me to talk a little bit about my fitness journey. So let's chat about it. Um, in high school, I played sports, but in college, I very quickly turned into that like typical girl who lives on the treadmill and on the elliptical and does some sit-ups and thinks that that is fitness. But I was able to run some miles, but I was like not strong at all. Um, and at some point I ended up signed up for one of those like obstacle course races with some friends. And I knew that I was not physically prepared to be able to do that without embarrassment. And so I thought like, let me try this CrossFit thing. Maybe they can, um, whip me into shape in a month or two. So I never ended up being able to do the obstacle course because I woke up that morning shitting my brains out. Um, but I did fall in love with CrossFit and over the next five years or so, I had several coaches who were amazing, who taught me how to lift, taught me, taught me how to do it safely and taught me how to modify things as needed. Um, so after about five years of doing that, I realized that I don't really like people that much and I don't really want my gym time to be a social event. So I left CrossFit to do those things kind of on my own at the gym with my AirPods and with my me, myself and I and my Eminem playlist. Um, but now I still focus on a lot of the same things on functional movements, strength training. And then of course I do add cardio in there as well. I'm not a big cardio fan, but I can tolerate it via Stairmaster and jump rope. And so that is um, generally my go-to for those things. So during that time, my nutrition kind of followed suit. Um, during my college years, I went through some periods of some severely restrictive eating that was neither um, healthy nor sustainable. But once I started lifting, I realized that I needed to use food as fuel so that I could perform how I wanted to. And so over time via years of trial and error, but also just educating myself, I have landed on the diet that I utilize now, um, which I like to call not eating like an asshole the majority of the time. So I follow no specific diet. I don't count anything that I eat, but I try to eat lots of protein every day. Um, I try to include vegetables and fiber in my diet. I try to minimize my sugar intake and then I eat carbs in moderation. I know that I need carbs to both feel and perform how I want to, um, but I'm not going to eat pasta like three meals a day on most days. Um, so that's kind of how I eat, how I work out. Um, one thing that I would like to emphasize is that consistency is key. We all have bad days. We all have bad weeks, but if you can just show up and do anything, whether it's walking for 10 minutes, doing some light body weight exercises, whatever it may be, that consistency over time turns into a habit, which eventually turns into a lifestyle. And that is what is so important in our job and EMS in any facet, um, even course, the fire department, law enforcement, any public safety profession, physical fitness is so important. Um, it plays right into our mental health as well. And in my opinion, you can't have one without the other and we need both. But um, in EMS specifically, 
physical fitness is important for four groups of people. Um, the first is us as individuals so that we can avoid um, injuries that are unnecessary and be able to have some longevity in our career and be able to perform it to the level that we should be able to. The second group is that it's important for our families. Our families deserve um, the people that, the best version of ourselves, the best version physically um, and emotionally. And then it's our coworkers who don't deserve to have to pick up our slack if we are not capable of performing our jobs um, to the degree in which we are expected to be able to do so. And then number four is our patients. Of course, our patients deserve for us to be able to perform our jobs um, quickly, efficiently to the best of our abilities so that they can get the care that they need as quickly as possible. So um, just show up. That's step number one. I'm going to go get mine in. Go get yours. My name is Jason Warren. I'm a firefighter paramedic. I'm also the owner of Mindfulness Medic. My objective in life is to help inspire other first responders to improve their mental health and their physical health and to build resilience in their mind, body, spirit. I've found that mental health has a direct reflection to your physical health and how you treat your physical body has a direct correlation to how your mental health is. I found throughout my career that I was at my worst mental health wise when my physical health was at its worst. I was morbidly obese, anxious, depressed, suffering from complex PTSD, primarily from things experienced on the job. I had some suicidal thoughts and suffered with a lot of mental health throughout my career. I found when I improved my physical health, my mental health automatically started to improve right after it. Some of the things that I've done and incorporated into my daily routine are my daily supplementation. I really did a lot of research to hone in and dial in all of the supplements that I take on a daily basis that work for my body and my fitness goals. What works for me is not necessarily going to be applicable to everyone else. So you have to do your own research into figuring out what those daily supplements are going to be for you. But for me, that's been absolutely game changing. Daily, I work out. I have at least one workout per day. It doesn't have to be anything major. It doesn't have to be anything involving an expensive gym membership. Every day, I like to at least make sure I'm doing 100 push-ups and some burpees because during our busy shift scheduling, as you know, we get called out a lot. It's hard sometimes to get the workout in and sometimes life happens. So when I wake up in the morning and I at least make sure I bang out those push-ups, I know that I've at least done something that day. You don't need a lot of expensive gym equipment or a gym membership to get what you want done. You can start out with simple body weight exercise, push-ups, burpees, air squats. Cardio is free as long as you have the ability to put out energy, you have mitochondria in your body to produce ATP, you can get cardio some way or another. Other than that, a minimal financial investment on your part can get you a few kettlebells, can get you some dumbbells, and you're on your way to really building some muscle. Two years ago, I started training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I can't recommend Brazilian Jiu Jitsu enough. I preach about it to everyone I meet. I think it's very valuable for people who are in public safety and first responders and in healthcare because it really helps you build the confidence and the ability to de-escalate violent situations and to really realize that you have a lot more capabilities than you think you do. It really helps improve your mental and physical health. Cold water immersion has been something I've been doing for a few years. Getting into cold water has absolutely transformed my life. Getting into cold water builds both physical and mental resilience. It has a lot of physical fitness benefits. It improves your cardiovascular health. It improves your immunity. It improves your cognitive function. It reduces anxiety and depression, and it really is good for inflammation and recovery. And again, because the mind has a direct reflection on the physical and vice versa, meditation and breath work, being present in the moment, showing some gratitude every single day, really focusing in on those things you have to be grateful for and trying to be present in the moment and just being mindful in your day to day is going to have immense benefits on your mental health, which are going to be reflective into your physical health. So just a few key points I wanna to touch on when it comes to physical fitness. Physical fitness is a long game. A lot of people get into working out and they'll stick with a routine for a couple months and they won't see immediate results and they'll just quit. You have to stick with physical fitness. It's gonna take years. And 
Once you start to see those results and you start to see the results of all that hard work you're putting in and all that effort, it just compounds over itself and you really start to feel good about yourself and your mental health improves. You start to feel happier. You start to feel like you have more energy in your day to day and it, it really starts to improve so many other aspects of your life. It's important to remember that it's drops in a bucket over time. It's those small incremental gains over time that are going to add up to those massive results in the long run. You just need to have that discipline and that tenacity and that true desire to want to change yourself and to live at your highest potential. Just like everything else, the hardest decision is to just start. Once you start, you've already made up 90% of that hard work. That last 10% is just sticking to it. Good luck. So obviously they both have pretty different perspectives. Now, my own fitness journey is quite different from both of those even. And I started in the fire service back uh, right when I was out of high school and I really didn't know how to work out. So what I would do is I would, you know, run three miles as fast as I possibly could and then I'd lift weights kind of willy nilly, you know, focusing on curls like uh, every 19 year old probably does. And I really didn't know what I was doing. Now, I have been experimenting with different fitness stuff since that time. You know, I don't think I've had uh, too many weeks go by where I haven't done something a couple times a week. I ironically, filming this video, this is the first time in like two years I haven't put on uh, miles on the road because my son gave me RSV and then that turned into pneumonia. So I've been kind of resting and decided to do a fitness video in this uh, uh, exact week. However, uh, what I did for a while is I uh, contacted Benton when I was kind of tired of kind of doing things willy nilly. And he started me on some strength coaching that kind of went the hybrid uh, athlete route where I did uh, some endurance stuff and then some weightlifting things. And really what that helped me kind of establish was a, a baseline uh, for lack of a better word. And it helped me focus on movements that would just help me get better at my job. You know, I wasn't doing this to be a better athlete in one specific sport or another. I was doing this to be a better paramedic and take care of my uh, patients with more efficiency. So I worked with him and uh, out of the blue, my sister-in-law called my wife and was like, hey, do you wanna do the Catalina Island Marathon? And I had kind of been experimenting with, you know, a little longer runs. It's something I kind of wanted to do. Uh, and I decided I'd do it with him. So we trained for about six months for that, went and ran the Catalina Island Marathon, which is a trail marathon out in California. It was absolutely spectacular. And from that point, I kind of learned what consistency in fitness was about. You know, everybody says you have to be consistent to see uh, progress, but over six months, I put in miles every single week, you know, about 20 miles or so a week, two short runs, one long run uh, that my friend Danielle uh, programmed for me. And with that, uh, I saw a huge improvement over a relatively short amount of time. You know, I saw my VO2 max go up on my Garmin watch. I saw my mile paces come down and it was really cool to see what the difference was. And once I ran that marathon, I was like, well, I ran a trail marathon. I want to run a uh, road marathon. So I ran the Colorado marathon and you know, was so close to that four hour mark and felt really good about it and kind of decided to go the route of more extreme endurance uh, events. So I then went on to do a 50K, uh, which is ended up being about 55K because I went the wrong way, about 34 miles. And then in three weeks, I go to run a 50 mile uh, course. So what the training for this has involved uh, for me has been you know, anywhere between four and six runs a week, trying to get 40 to 60 miles a week in. These are not fast miles. And that was the biggest thing that I kind of learned with running is that I stopped killing myself every single time I did a workout. I really tried to prioritize slow uh, aerobic bases uh, with my runs, you know, running at a 12 minute mile pace for a long period of time. and. That's really helped me kind of recover and see that I don't need to just be dead every time I come back from something. Now I knew I couldn't just do cardio and expect to stay proficient in this space because there's a huge strength component with EMS. And there is also a pretty strong correlation between not doing strength training and injuries when you're running for a long period of time. So I strength train about three times a week on top of that, you know, nothing crazy. I don't lift super heavy weights. I'm not amazingly strong, but try to keep 
you know, some lower body strength stuff for that and doing hill work as well as doing some upper body stuff just to, you know, maintain my proficiency in that. And through this, I am still not a super athlete. You know, I am still not, you know, amazingly shredded or anything like that, but I have noticed a huge difference at work, whether that's stress prevention. Um, you know, I find I'm able to go later into the night uh, on my 24 hour shifts and feel okay. You know, in really stressful situations, my heart rate stays a lot lower than it did. And uh, it, it, if there's data to support it, I don't know, but it feels like it helps me kind of calm down on scene and just be a little bit more aware of what's going on. And then in addition to that, I, you know, I haven't been injured in a while. You know, I've had a couple small running injuries, but nothing that's really affected me at work. So I've noticed a huge uh, boon in that regard. As far as diet goes, uh, that's something that I don't have dialed in. And I'm not gonna lie to you and say that I know exactly what to do. I eat like crap a lot of the times, especially now that I'm running so much, you know, and burning, you know, 5,000 calories uh, a day doing that. Um, I find that I eat a lot of crap. I try to get uh, enough protein in and try to increase fiber intake a little bit, but I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that I have that figured out. So for me, that's kind of the next hurdle I have to jump over. Now, as far as how this relates to you, I don't think there is any one thing that's going to, you know, be right for everybody. And we kind of talked about that at the beginning of this video. I don't think there's one fitness plan, there's one you know person you need to follow or do exactly what they do. You need to take pieces from multiple people that you're around on a daily basis, that you see online, and figure out what, what works for your needs. I truly believe that if you're doing something, it's going to be enough for most cases. So just in my department, we've got a huge spectrum of you know fitness levels. One of our pilots, he climbed Everest. I know Special Forces dudes that have climbed with him that are like, oh yeah, he's a badass. Uh, one of my regular partners, she runs 100 mile races uh, pretty regularly and a lot of ultra marathons. My other partner that I work with, he was a minor league baseball player and now he mountain bikes religiously. I have no doubt he could be you know semi-pro pro if he really put his mind to it. And then we've got uh, a ballerina. She's pretty accomplished in that. We've got a crossfitter. We've got people that just go hunt a lot or, or do biking as a hobby. But one thing that everybody at my base has in common is that everybody does something. And I really think that should be the priority. Whether that's just going for a walk every day, uh, you know, whether that's on shift or off shift, that's huge. And you can walk anywhere. If you want to just walk the hose tower a couple times, you know, that's going to add up over time. So I think the little things can't be stressed enough in this space and making little changes over a long period of time is huge. Don't get caught up in re working out really hard. Like don't just watch David Goggins and think like every day I need to kill myself and feel like absolute crap or I didn't accomplish anything because that couldn't be farther from the truth in my opinion. There are times where you have to push yourself and you have to be able to kind of go that extra mile, but that's not good advice for sustainability. Uh, for me, I have a couple hard workouts a week, but a lot of times, you know, I'm barely breaking a sweat when I get done with my run or, or lifting and I've seen huge, huge improvements over time. That's essentially all I have for this video. If you haven't already, go follow Lindsay and Jason. I'll leave their profiles down below. They put out a ton of great content uh, and are pretty great in this space. I think they represent uh, EMS and public safety in general, general very well. With all of that being said, I'd love to hear what your fitness journey is, You know what your uh, accomplishments have been in this space, what your uh, pitfalls have been, what's been hard for you and what's worked. That being said, you know, be nice. There's no reason to, you know, shame people into stuff. You know, I think there's a compelling reason to be fit and pursue fitness in this. Uh, but ultimately, this is everybody's personal choice. So with that being said, I'll see you next week.